Alrighty, welcome back for the last game for this evening that I'll be casting because my voice is absolutely fucked and I'm actually quite tired. But, welcome, 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 welcome to the fifth game of this evening. All VODs will be put up on the Southern Cross Dota web YouTube page and probably the website as well. Anyway, this is our last game for this evening. I am Ice Cubed and joining me is nobody because I have no friends who wanted to cast with me. Poor eyes. Anyway. Let's introduce the teams for this random heroes. It's all random game. We've got first up on the OG Small Cat, we have Weaver. Vi is Vey, I've been told it is Vey. Is playing the Terror Blade. On the Tinker we have Storyteller. Marsh is playing the Troll Warlord. And we have Artigas on the Necro. Meanwhile, on the Dice side, we have Five playing the Elder Titan. On the Dark Seer, we have Angus the Bull. Play Plays here, I think that says, is on the Ogre Mag Guy. On the Bristleback, we do have Fine Tuned. And last but not least, we have Jean Claude Van Damme on the Nature's Prophet. Cha-ching, cha-ching. Starting off very early, very, 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 very early, with the trance in the side jungle. Anyway, so starting the creep equ equilibrium, equilibrium, the creep equilibrium is going to be heavily in favour of Marsh, so he's going to have quite an easy time, easier time getting his first few levels. Looks like we're going to have a level 1 gank though. Vi Vey and Nardigus are going to go on Angus to Bull, but... There's just not enough lockdown to really do anything against him. Vey going for that first point in the Terror Blade Metamorphosis. Should prove to be quite handy. Weaver... Going to get... Smacked a bit. If they chase him down, they could probably get a kill in Small Cat, but... No, fine tuned and... Plays here is just going to let him go on a little bit of HP. Darkseer is still doing a bit down here. Metamorphosis has almost run out. It's such a long spell for a level 1. Well, for a spell that can be used at level 1 for a single skill. It always feels like an ultimate because Sunder just really doesn't feel like anything. It's really disappointing too. Mid lane, Elton still playing at the disadvantage. Marsh doing a little bit of work now. Elder Titan's got a little bit of damage from the bonus stuff that he does. Taken a lot of damage from Mush though. Bottom lane, a few pings come out. Nothing too big. Top lane, Weaver is taking a fair bit of damage actually, but he's going to get out just in time. Mush is going balls deep on this Elder Titan. He's going to pop that salve and Mush is going to remove it completely. That's not what you want when it comes to a salve, especially when you use it so early on. He's going to walk up to top lane but miss the rune because there's no wards up there for the Radiant side at the moment. It's not going to help. And... Looks like Terrorblade and Necrolite are going to go on the darks here. Surge is going to get up and help him get out of there, but almost losing his life. Darks here is playing extremely well. If we get the last hit, we are Terrorblade and two t people on the Radiant team doing work, by the looks of it. Got Terrorblade and uh, Troll Warlord up the top. Not follow, not close, far behind from. Well, oh, I should say, all the Titan and Prophet aren't far behind that with. Bristleback, go, look, look to be the farmer on the top lane. Got Tinker stacking the ancients in the top. So, playing like that, I can never do this because I just suck at Tinker. Personally, but that's what happens. Anyway, it looks like Elder Titan is doing a bit of harass to Troll Warlord now. Taking a lot of damage. Welling Axe has come out with the stomp on top of that. 
A few hits should kill Mush. Mush is going to get ancestral and going to get hit for the first blood. Five drawing that first blood on Mush. One nil to the dire. Just lucky he had enough mana for that ancestral spirit then. About two kills coming out now. Tinker dying, just taking the easy ray ray out. Or at least I'd like to say it is taking the easy way out to <laughs> death, but he. Not too sure. Looks like he's going for that soul ring first. Only 473 HP. Top lane. Weaver's getting a bit too close. They're just going to scan him a little bit, but it's going to have to force Weaver to come back a bit. Just can't quite get there. Elder Titan is going to get the stomp on Vey. Vey is going to have to back up quite quickly. Artigus getting that heal off. The vacuum coming out. Vey taking so much damage from the Elder Titan and with the ancestral imp uh, ancest ancestral spirit buff and an iron shell, there's just no hope for Vey. 3 0 in favour of the Dyer. So, very, very early start. Vey, uh, Artigus Bull taking a bit of damage. The stomp comes out, and Weave is going to get caught right in the middle of a stomp and a split earth. Taking a ton and ton of damage. Quite a bit. Small Cat going to have to come down to the bottom lane now because he's just taking a bit too much damage at the top. He's going to get himself and buy another teleport scroll, though. Meanwhile, Bristleback's getting all this free farm. Tinker dying again to the Ancients. Only level 2. A bit disappointing, but. He has said that it is his first time playing the Tinker in the in the ancient position. Meanwhile, Prophet is getting a few levels, so he'll start be, be able to start yanking very soon. Smallcat teleporting back up to the top lane. Bristleback's going to have to back off from that one though because he's just playing it a bit safe. They do have a ward there though so they can see when anyone teleports in. I like the ward spot that's up here where you can see just pretty much anything usually happens. There has been a rune spotted, well not spotted yet, but it has been pinged out saying that it is in the bottom lane. It is an invisibility rune and Elder Titan is going to be able to pick that one up, fulfilling his bottled duty. Butting that up, he's going to have an invisibility rune now and walk, look towards the bottom lane. Vey and Artigas just casually hanging about while Darkseer is already level 6, Vey only level 5, and Artigas only level 4, so. Interesting what happens, but Elder Titan is actually going to back off and head back towards middle. Weaver trying. Just to get a bit of experience now, because he can't get too close. The damage that comes out on the bristles is just a bit too much for him to do any da like for for him to really take any damage without sorta of dying. I guess he does have time lapse up now though. So Darks is still doing work in this bottom lane though. It hasn't been ganked as often. It hasn't been ganked as often as wanted to like, but... Bristleback and Ogre going on this Weaver now, but... just not quite enough damage to really hold him down whilst he's in that Sakuchi. Well, not enough stun to hold him down in that Sakuchi. Because they've got the damage, definitely, but it's just when he starts the Sakuchi, it's, you know, we don't... we can't really do anything. But they are going to go quite deep on him. Sakuchi again, he's going to turn back around for some reason, but he does back off completely. Vey, looking to go on Angus the Bull, he's going to drop down his illusion, not just sort of harass him out of lane a bit, get him to back off so um, Vey can farm a bit more. Not going any points in Conjure Image, and a lot of people like to go Conjure Image because it's basically a free illusion and it does a fair bit of damage. 
That's quite odd that they hasn't actually gone for that. Mush. Taking a bit of damage now. Looks like on bottom lane, Vay's taking a bit more damage. It's gonna have to go into Metamorphosis, fond of... Me oh, the Sunder comes out and uh, the Darkseer is taking a fair bit of damage. But the wall is just doing a bit too much and the wall gets the kill on the... Uh, on Vay. Darkseer picking up a kill there. But Vay getting an experience, unluckily with that wall though. I think if she ran around the other way, she probably would have gotten... Uh, she probably would have gotten out alright, but... Well, El Titan's going to find Mosh. He's going to get stomped upon, but going to back up because he can hear the teleport coming in. It is Weaver, so they could probably start doing a bit here. Ultimate comes out by the by Mush. But Five is just going to walk around a bit. He's going to stomp. It's going to get three of them. Tink is coming in, only level four. Five is going to get spotted out, and he's going to take a bit too much damage, and that's going to be the death of him. Bristleback coming in from behind, though. What's he going to be doing? Secret little Bristleback. He's going to go to the uh, the shop and pick up a point pistol, by the looks of it. Doesn't quite have enough for it, by the looks of it, but he's taking a lot of damage from the uh, Troll Warlord. With that ult coming up, then the auto attacks from Artigas and Mosh just finish it off. Nature's Prophet teleporting in from behind, trying to help a little bit, but not being able to do a bit any, anything too much. Four seconds off the teleport. Will he be able to get out in time? Most likely not. There is a stun on Artigas up, so when he comes up, he does. And Necrophos gets that last kill. The Artigas picks up the kill. 4-5 now. Radiant starting to make a bit of a comeback. The dive on the... Terra Blade on bottom. The Elder Titan and Elder Titan and Darkseer proves unsuccessful and now we have a pause here while we might be some connection issues. Might not be, but Alright, looks like we're good to go. So we just wait. Three, two, one, and we're back in it. And it looks like nothing exciting. Terrible. She's still getting harassed a little bit. Um, it's going to have a really rough time against two of them trying to farm. Ironshell coming out, trying to do a bit of damage. Terrible. His base of damage is just so intense. Ninety-one. Teleport coming in by Troll Warlord. It looks like they're going to go on the ducks here. Vay dropping down a really little HP, but he's going to get the Sunder off. Stomp going to come out. Uh, Warlord, Troll Warlord, doing some work on five, but he's going to kill. Meanwhile, Darkseer getting the kill on Terra Plate. I'm not too sure how that happened. Um, she seemed to have got away on quite like quite okay health, but doesn't seem so. Wait, Elder Titan throwing out an ancestral spirits to do a little bit of harassment while well, Darkseer comes back down and starts using Iron Shell. It would have been an Iron Shell that picked up the um, Terror Blade, so that would have been my best... that'd be my best guess, to be honest. Vanguard picked up on Bristleback. Tinker's still at the Ancients, still trying his best. He finally hits level 6. He has nothing to gank with, though. That's a quite of an issue. Nature's Prophet picking up the double damage. They might look to push somewhere now. Double damage, Nature's Prophet. Even early on, it's kind of scary because it just teleports straight on top of you. With the uh, Sprout, it just starts to do a bit, a, a bit too much damage. Terra Blade Illusion going to get spotted out. They're not going to get thrown on it. That's not going to do much. In our top lane, we have... Weaver, just harassing, trying to sort of stay out of the harassment of the the blood, uh, the bristleback. Why did I even start saying blood? Anyway, it was the bristleback. Sentry ward getting dropped a bit too late then, and bristle. Uh, and Weaver was able to get out with his sakuchu. 
But these lanes have been very static at the moment. Dyer have not really moved around much besides the odd Elder Titan going to bottom lane. The Radiant have been switching it up, trying to get farm where they can, and... Tinker still trying his best at these Ancients. Can't quite do it. Illusion's going to come in. It's going to find the Nature's Prophet. It's going to hit him a bit, but the Illusion just won't die. But it all, at the same time, it's just not doing any damage. So it's kind of a pain. Top lane, Bristleback is... Kinda of close to the tower. Might be looking to go for it. The tower is dropping down, so they might be looking to push very shortly. Weaver coming up with that Sakuchi trying to do a little bit of damage to the heroes that are up there, but just not quite doing enough to really make anything, especially against the Bristleback, it's just so, so hard. Mush looking towards this regen rune, he's going to pick it up, bottle it up, nice and easy. Meanwhile, Vay's back down the bottom again, so she's been rotating around a bit, trying to get farm where she can. Got two heroes rotating towards the jungle. Gonna find the Nature's Prophet. Gonna get the slow on him. Whirling Axis should come down soon, and the Necrophos ulti is going to pick up the last hit. Killing Nature's Prophet ag yet again. Just getting caught out really unluckily. There's no wards up at the moment, so it makes it a bit difficult for him to jungle like 100% safe. Tinker still haven't found it in them ancients. It's not given up too easily. We have another pause. Small cat. Pause because there's someone at his door, apparently. Alright. Probably, uh, what are their names? Anyway. Waiting for this pause to get back up. Terribly like trying to find a farm where she can. He can. Whatever. Sex. Terribly like it is. I think it's a he. Pretty sure it's a he. Sounds like a he. Anyway. Sentry Lane. Sentry Ward. He's actually for the Radiant, so. Weaver can start playing a little bit more safe now, knowing where he can actually secure you. Necrophos is coming in, going to look to gank with the Troll Warlord on top of that. Troll ulti coming in. They're going to need to do something to stop down this, to stop this Bristleback, but they just have nothing that really locks him down so they can get in front of him and start dealing some actual damage. Prophet ulti coming in, not doing the damage probably required, but at the same time, just looking for it to push the lane. Our first tier one of the game, I believe, is our middle for the rating. Die picking it up, of course. Troll going, going up to take poor Tinker's farm. Poor Tinker, he's been at it all game. I think he finally has his bots, he does. So 16 minute bots, he's now able to at least teleport somewhere else. Terrorblade Illusion is going to spot out the two that are here. Gonna, they're going to... it's actually three. It's a Terrorblade Illusion. They did sprout for that and vacuum oddly enough. They and Tinker are actually down here trying to defend, but with the bots up. Ancestral Imprisonment. The stun's coming out as well. Not going to quite do enough. Five. He might get trapped here, but no, he's going to be able to make it out quite alright. They're going to try and take this tier one bottom, though, but this Fortify comes out. And they might be looking to deny it. In fact, Terraplay does come and deny it. The stun, the uh, ult comes out from Necrophos, trying to slow him down just a bit so they can get out. The war comes up as well. 
I don't think there's much they can do here. In fact, Necrophile's dropping down quite a bit. Ulti coming out, picking up a double kill for Nature's Prophet. Very lucky there. I mean, why farm creeps when you can farm heroes? They're using that ulti there, and just doing a little bit of damage. We've coming in from behind too. Gonna try and slow down on the uh, Ogre Magi, but Ogre Magi's just going to turn around and smack him out with a stun. Terrorblade doing a bit of work there to bristle back, but Bristleback's going to have to back off. Terrorblade just going to come back to farming. Meanwhile, top lane is going to drop to Jean Claude. Jean picking up that second tower. And the third one getting denied. Well, actually, the third tower, the second one getting denied down the bottom. Tinker is starting to do a little bit now that he finally has his boots of travel. He's got level 8. He's been at the Ancients all pretty much all game. The kill going in favour of Mush in the middle lane. Picking up that kill on the Elder's Titan. Almost said Elder Scrolls. That would have been definitely the wrong world, but it was the other time it died. Just playing a bit too aggressively by the looks of it. Mush now getting quite a few items up. He's got his phase. He's almost got a BKB now too. He's only 1300 off it. Once he gets that up, he'll be able to take so much more of this uh, magic damage. Or even he'll just be able to sit there and whilst they're all, everyone's doing everything and pick up kills. They are looking to push down this tier 2 now. Tier 1 now. Duxy out in the middle. He's going to get slowed quite a bit. Ignite comes out. Stun comes out from Necrophos as well. The wall and the vacuum comes in. Stomped by Elder Titan. It's going to do a bit of damage. Vay is going to use the Sunder on the Elder Titan. And it's, she's going to take a... Elder Titan is going to take a lot of damage. Bristle back coming in the rear. Mush getting a bit aggro on him. But with Ogre Magi right behind Bristleback. The damage is coming out. The damage comes out and destroys her. Nature's Prophet was going to teleport in there, but quite, didn't quite. Meanwhile, Weaver's trying to push down this top tower, so... Trying to get a few kills while they're there. Whilst everyone was getting killed middle, he was just up the top, having a fun time. Bristleback dropping very, very low. 60 HP. He will most likely get out. Regen Rune's going to be there. Picked up by Vey. But Bristleback, just a bit too quick, is going to get out. Okay. No rockets left, so... Well, no rockets for Storyteller. He's going to have to back up. Knight coming out by Okamaja. Not going to quite do enough. Vacuum got thrown out and is actually going to catch up Storyteller with the, uh, with the Fire Blast coming out as well. Sorry, Teller dropping very, very low. The heals come out though by Necrovos, and it should be a help. It should help him back on his way. Meanwhile, Articus is going to lose his life for trying to save him though, because Darkseer Iron Shell is just too strong. Meanwhile, Elder Titan Split Earth comes through the middle and gets the Weaver. Just a bit too much damage for him to take. Terror Blade gonna get caught out. Fire Blast should be here very soon. It does come out. Ignite right behind it. It's going to hit both the illusions as well, so... But Vey is able to come out. Mush coming in from behind. Might be able to do something. I doubt it, though. There are four of them here. Bristleback's going to come in. With the Nasal Goo, it should slow him down quite a bit. The Slows come in. Mush is going to take a lot of damage and lose his life for it. So, a two-for-nothing trade there. Um, Mush coming in very late, actually, so just really, really unfortunate. Nature's Prophet pushing the bottom lane. Meanwhile, we have a Tinker who is drastically trying to counter push with the typical Tinker build. Four points, well, early game pushing Tinker build. Four points in the Marcher Machines. Just trying to do what damage he can just to hold back. Meanwhile, top lane. It looks like we're going to ha see someone go on Weaver. But he's going to back out. Tinker looks like he's going to teleport back to the bottom. So it wasn't actually to the lane. But the Dire are going to have to back off from this. Meanwhile, 
Ooh, the ult coming down from Necrophos. It's onto the Altai. It's not going to do much. A war coming out with the stomp on top of that. It's going to force the Radiant to back off. Weaver actually dying amongst all of that. Bloodlust is finally online now for Ogre Magi. Going to be able to do something. Vacuum coming in for Darkseer on the... Uh, on the Weaver. No, it wasn't Weaver. On the Tinker. And a lot of kills just going the way of the of the Dire now. It is 3-1 in favour of them. With that Darkseer wall just doing work, meanwhile. Prophet trying to push, continue split pushing down the bottom lane. He's going to teleport back up the top. And they will most likely continue the push. In fact, Necrophos is going to get caught out. The Fire Blast is going to come down with a stomp on top of that. Stomp doesn't quite make it, but the, uh, the Furion does pick up the last hit on the uh, Necrophos. Weaver throwing out the swarm out the middle now. Is going to find a Elder Titan going to go for him, but he's going to back off when he sees a stomp coming out. Meanwhile, we have Nature's Prophet who is pushing up this middle lane. Will this be our second tier two? Troll Warlord is to rotating back towards the middle. With Weaver up behind him, they should be able to do something to this Furion. In fact, he does have a Shadow Blade up though, so he might be able to back up. In fact, he does use a Shadow Blade. The dust gets thrown out though by a Troll Warlord. He's going to get slowed as well. Weaver coming in from behind. Elder Titan with his stomp is going to slow down Mush. But will Furion make it out? No, he won't. The Weaver, the Weaver Swarm does pick him up. He does use time lapse to get out of danger, but Necrophos, uh, but he does. It probably wasn't wasn't really necessary because they weren't getting attacked then. Artigas getting caught in the wall with a vacuum. Has to back off. Furion coming in from behind though with a Deso up at the moment, so able to do quite a bit of damage. But he doesn't have Shadow Blade up for another twenty seconds. However, Darkseid comes in with the surge, and Furion is able to get it out quite easily. That was a buyback though. He did get the kill, so it does help. Weaver's going to get spotted running away in the bottom lane. Maybe if you're on teleport, could pick him up. Maybe not, but there is a, there is Vay just sitting here farming right next to him though, so it'll be quite a deadly teleport if he does follow through. Looks like the Radiant are grouping up in the bottom lane. They might be looking to do something here, but I'm not too sure if they can do anything. They might mount up to a push, but it, it's really unsure what... Like, I'm really unsure what they can possibly achieve. Maybe just slowing down the Dire Farm a little bit, but besides that, like, the Dire are just winning in teamfights, so there's no real point for them to be grouping up. In fact, even Terrorblade had to teleport out because he... He knew things were coming, and it was going to be bad. does pick up the Manta, however, though, so that will come quite in handy, especially a hero who is well-based around his illusions. Tinker, with those boots of travel, is going to teleport mid and help with the push mid with Weaver. A few pigs are coming out. It looks like they want to defend this. In fact, Bristleback's going to come in and take no damage, because it's Bristleback, and who needs damage? I'm going to look to... All the time, looking to rotate. He's going to get jumped on by Necrophos and the... the Troll Warlord, but all the ultis and everything comes down and it just drops in. Nature's Prophet coming in from behind though, doing a lot of damage to the... to the um, Troll Warlord. But Tinker coming in, he's actually starting to hurt a bit now. Necrophos got that heal off. It should be the death of him. In fact, it probably will. War comes out. There should be a vacuum. No, the vacuum was used before the war came out, and the death on the Furion is, happens there. Now Ogre Magi comes in with that Fire Blaster three times cast. Who needs skill when you have RNG, bitch? Two for two trade. We have split pushing on the top lane, so they're going to push this lane. They need to slow down this Bristleback because he just keeps running away. He does have a lot of damage, especially with Warpath. Just makes it so hard 
to for him to die, and he just does so much damage. It's just quite ridiculous, really. Dire grouping up. The top lane. Looks like Tinker is actually going back down, down to the bottom lane and continue on the way he is. Oddly enough, Bristleback picking up a Vladimir's offering. Um, I don't, haven't really seen uh, many Bristlebacks pick that item up because, like, really, you know, you'd sort of leave it to a carry or someone who can run off and farm by themselves and sort of, you know, really sustain a jungle like it. I mean, it's not a bad item on a Terra Blade either, but that Vladimir's offering there, it's just, it just seems very, very odd, especially on a Bristleback. Even. Anyway, we have teleports coming in down to Roshan, and it looks like the raiding gonna do it. Now, Furion doing a lot of solo damage to it. Darkseid picking up a haste rune. And this Roshan dropping really, really fast. This might turn into a really big push. I'm assuming it will. But it'd be, it'd be interesting to see who picks it up. I don't think Bristleback really needs it. In fact, Furion is going to pick it up. So, Furion quite, quite far ahead. If we have a look at the net worth, Furion is ahead by about 3,000 uh, with Bristleback in second place, his teammate. Darks are just overtaking him. So Bristleback and Darks are around the same. And then Terra Blade, who is 5,000 behind the carry, well, the carry Furion, so... It's going to be a really hard game for him to come back with. Weaver getting actually hit a fair bit. A lot of damage. Everyone's chasing him at the moment, but he's going to just keep Sakuchiing and Sakuchiing away. Marsh is actually going to get caught by the Sprout of the Nature's Prophet and the El Earth Split is going to come through and pick up that kill as well. Meanwhile, we have a push on the top lane. It's going to... No, nope, the Dyer are going to continue pushing. They're going to forget that tier 2. We are going to continue pushing. It is really looking like a base race right now. 30 minutes in. That's a really odd time to have it too. Like, But with all the illusions from Bay, like, it's just amazing how much damage she can put out so quickly. Someone's going to have to teleport into this top tower because they they only just picked up the tier 1 and the, uh, the tier 2 and the tier 3 for them are losing. So in, all in all, it's a pretty, pretty bad... Exchange. Necrophos gonna get caught out. Not quite enough items to do what they wanted. Well, not quite enough items. Not quite enough uh, stuns or anything, really. Makes it quite hard. Looks like the, the Radiant are drawing on the map. They want to pressure this tier, these two barracks at the top, quite a bit, I think. But Darks is going to get spotted out with Regen Rune. Terrorblade running up, doing a. F this Lucian's just doing so much to Darks uh, to Ogre Magi. Like there's just nothing they can do. Like it's just an illusion. Like what? What do? What do? War coming out now, and a lot of damage coming out on that Necrophos. He's going to lose his life. Earthsplitter coming out on Marsh. Marsh is going absolute ape shit with this BKB on, though, but just not quite enough damage to kill anyone. Plus, being kited a little bit. It looks like they're going to turn and put their attention towards this Weaver, who now has a Daedalus. But they should be able to push this guy, uh, this. these two back a bit, and. in fact. Faye's going to get spotted out, and she's going to take quite a bit of damage. The wall, uh, the vacuum coming in, trying to use Sunder, but just not enough to do anything. Terrible. He was, you know, dodging a lot of them hits, but Weaver picking up a kill actually on the darks here, so 
pings go out, but I think they're going to continue pushing down this tier 3 tower, which would be the logical thing, because there's nothing that Weaver can do by himself. Really. Except slow down the creep wave, but when you have Nature's Prophet, who needs a creep wave? Old Titan's just standing in the um, in the Tinker's uh, marching machines with that blade mail. It's just making it super hard for him to really do anything. Meanwhile, the Radiant have realised, well, there's no creeps coming down through here because Weaver's still up there. We're going to have to turn our attention towards a different tower. They've rotated towards the mid, and they should probably they should be able to take this one down with a Furion, with a Deso, with the creep, all the creeps as well. It should be quite easy. But with much machines, it's making it a bit more difficult than what it should seem. Ulti coming in by uh, oh massive Earth split into vacuum for Elder Titan, picking up the Necrophos. Elder Titan on very, very low HP. Yules is going to be used on him. He's going to get thrown up in the air and picked up by Troll Warlord. Bit of damage comes out. The vacuum into the wall is massive, but just not enough to really slow him down. Troll Warlord pops his BKB. He's turning his attention to someone else, but he's just taking a bit too much damage. Shadow Blade is going to get him out and Vay is going to be able to teleport back in time. Weaver coming in from behind, though. He's going to take a lot of damage. In fact, he doesn't have time-lapse up for another six seconds, so he won't be able to time-lapse out of the damage. It's going to take heaps and heaps of damage. Brisbane is still chasing. He wants this Weaver dead. But Weaver's just going to go, well, I don't actually have to run that way because, you know, I'm invisible. And he fends off the... That's the, the attack. Darks here looking on top of this, uh, on the top of the cliff, looking for a really good situation to go in. But Nature's Prophet's going to teleport in, they're going to find Bay, and with the vacuum and the hex, it should be a dead uh, Terra Blade. In fact, it is. Nature's Prophet is going to die for his efforts, though, and most likely a Darkseer Yens, in fact, he does. So a two-for-one trade, then. Probably not the best thing they were looking for, especially considering that it, their highest carry was... Uh, their highest farmed hero was the one to have died. But it's a two-for-one trade, so there's no denying that. If we have a look at the buyback status... No one has buyback yet except for the, the raid inside, too. So. Interesting to see what happens. Weaver's going to get lose half his HP. I'm surprised he didn't time lapse and just to get out of all that damage. But he's going to turn back around. Meanwhile, Mush is going to get spotted. El Esper is going to get thrown out. Mush is just going to dodge it. Bristleback going really crazy on him. Necrophos is going to get fire blasted top upon of. Tin uh, Tinker is probably going to die to the Eld Titan, but we have a. Troll Wallet, who has just used Shadow Blade to get out of danger. Necrophos going to keep chasing, but El Titan turning back around and getting a kill. With Bristleback as well, so it's a 3 for 3, 3 for 1 trade there. It was 3v1 to begin with, too. Terrorblade coming in, looking to do something, but not quite. Not quite able to catch up to the enemies. Maybe she might look at going for a Saiyan Yasha because a Saiyan Yasha is always a good item on heroes like Terra Blade who just need to be in the fight. If they get kited around too much, then it's pretty much over for them. You get a Saiyan Yasha that's going to sort of help with those issues, and then later on you can sort of. Well, now that she's got a mana. Well, he's got a mana now anyway, so it doesn't really. Doesn't really matter. Alright, looks like they might be pushing mid again. Just not much they can do. Troll Warlord coming in to see if he can do anything to Darkseer, but he's gonna have to back off. Darkseer running around. Being OP and shit. Because he's 
because he's dark, see? Troll Warlord doing a bit of damage to the Creeps, trying to push him back a bit. Melon bottom lane. The Weaver versus Nature's Prophet. Now, Nature's Prophet has decided to go with more of a ganky build. It's like a sort of Sammy gank, Sammy push build. Pings on Roshan. They might be. The die might be looking to go for it. It was die who. No, it was Radian who pinged it out. Actually, they might be pinging, saying, "Hey guys, they might be there, but not at the moment because they are getting spotted by these wards." There is actually a ward there that's going to get spotted out by the Century, so they're going to see that. Bristol back and Elder Titan are going to take the Bloodlust as well as the Ogre Magi. That multicast Bloodlust. They're going to continue down this push mid. Going to try and do what they can while doing it while Tinker isn't here, so. Help quite a lot. Nature's Prophet just doing a ton of damage to that tower, and it drops very, very quickly. Elder, um, Elder Split comes through with the stomp and misses everyone. But now here comes El uh, here comes Terrorblade. Vacuum's gonna come in, it's gonna miss the thing, the wall, but Necrofoss ulti coming in as well. Gonna miss everyone, not quite enough damage. Wave's gonna drop for his efforts. Mush coming in through the middle with the BKB, not quite enough damage. Tinker using the March the Machines to try and do some damage. Vay losing a lot of damage from the Nature's Prophet right clicks. Mush gonna get sheeped up, and he's gonna lose his life for it too, with the Fire Blast and the right clicks from Nature's Prophet. Just a lot of damage. Terrible coming in from behind. It's gonna pick up the kill on the on the Nature's Prophet, but the three times Fire Blast is just going to destroy him. Weaver taking a bit too much damage. One more hit and it will probably kill him, but he is going to run off. Things coming out on the Roshan. It looks like they're going to go for it. There's, re there's an invisibility rune here, so they might be able to pick that up. And In fact, Bay knows that they burn RNG to death. Roshan is going to drop to the Dyer. I assume it'll be put on profit again because has to well, it's desire. nature's profit. Do you get the joke? Hugh, Hugh. Anyway, they're gonna probably look to continue down the push on try and pick up these two barracks here. Because if they pick them ones up, they can then rotate into the other lanes and just sort of slow siege their way to victory. At the same time, too, that um. The Radiant have actually taken, were the first ones to take down a tier 3 tower, but just the slow siege, slow siege from the Dire, just making it really impossible for the Radiant to do anything really, besides turtle up. But they do have one of the best turtling heroes in Tinker, and it just makes it a little bit easier. Although Titan, with that Invisible Rune, might be looking to do something. He's gonna spot out Nature's Prophet. Necrofoss gonna come in, he's gonna get spotted out, but... Here comes, uh, what's his name? Troll Warlord. Earthsplitter is going to get thrown out, but he's going to drop to the Earthsplitter. Two dead already, Terrorblade and Necrofoss. Darks is going to continue going in. The Marching Machines comes up. Uh, Weaver is going to do a bit of damage to Darks, but Darks is going to run off. Sakuchi and, well, actually, Troll Warlord is going to drop from Bristleback, so Bristleback doing work there. This should be a Rax and will most likely be the GG. Tinker trying to do a bit of damage, as much damage as he possibly can, but just can't quite. Pushing down the tier two, tier 3 button now. Now, This will probably most likely be a Rax and GG well played has been played, called by a Mush. So it does look like they are... Uh, Going to stop playing here if, unless it gets called. Unless it gets cancelled. Doesn't look like it though. Hmm, in fact, there was just a fake GG well played call. That's kind of weird. Anyway, Bristleback and Zox is still on this push on the bottom lane. 
They're going to try and take down this tier 3 tower. It's still a bit of health. Here comes Bristleback. He's just doing some work on this Necro. They're going to go on the Weaver because Weaver is squishier and more stronger. But he's going to be able to time lapse out of that. Meanwhile, here comes A as a Terror Blade, just doing some work, doing some serious work on this Bristleback. He's going to lose. He's going to end his monster kill streak for 1139 gold. Very, 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 very big bounty. Meanwhile, the rest of the team, rest of the die are just sort of just hanging around farming. So they probably could have went for the win then, but they've decided to just stick around and farm. Try and get a few more key items and then try and go for the final push. Aegis is not up anymore because Nature's Prophet, the one who did have it, has lost it. Which is unfortunate as it is. It's just, is just such is life. But it looks like the Radiant are going to try and push down this tier 2 mid. In fact, they are. They will probably continue to push down. They know that because the Rax is down mid, they're going to have to push down this lane, so it sort of brings back the equilibrium to sort of a standstill, so they don't have to worry about that lane so much. Elder Titan sitting at the top, probably looking to go in. He's going to spot out Vey with the... Stomp, and the Ancestral Spirit coming on top of that. Troll Wall is going to get dusted upon, and most likely run... He's probably going to just get out. He, in fact, is going to just run away. Furon coming in, he's going to get the Sprout off, and with a Multicast and an Earth Splitter, it is just a dead Troll Warlord. Meanwhile, Weaver... Weaver, a level 20 Weaver? He must have bought back before. Just losing his life very, very quickly. Nature's Prophet teleporting down the bottom to start split pushing. While Necro is going to get out okay. All good for Necro. Aegis Prophet, they're going to try and bring down this last bit of the tower. In fact, they are going to get it down. Going to put push their t attention towards the barracks, but here's a Necrophos, so why not go for him? Which is what they do. The ult comes out almost killing Bristleback. So... Quite a bit of damage there. Tinker's coming in now. I think he has... No, he doesn't, because the Agnims makes the laser big, but it wasn't us that big. Troll Lord at Warlord just running out and dying. Elder Titan... They're just going to try and siege this... Th uh, this th second Rax. The second ranged Rax. I don't think there is much that they can do. Now, unfortunately... That is the second racks down, second set of racks. They're going to actually push their attention towards the tier 3 on the top lane. Darks are going to get caught out by the... But in comes the ult. A lot of damage coming out, and it's going to get pick up a Tinker and the Terrorblade. Terrorblade's going to buy back. I don't think there's much that Terrorblade can do, though. The tier 3 has fallen. The first racks has fallen. They're going to turn around on the Terrorblade, but... Not the right Terror Blade. Here's a Necrophos. Let's get him. The tier two, the, the third set of racks has fallen. With only the tier fours before the an ancient, this looks like it will be over. GG has been called. As we see the final ancient fall. This was a very very fun game to watch. Actually, a nice long 46 minute game, which I haven't had the pleasure of doing one tonight. But it has been a nice, nice long game. Um, very, very early aggression by the Dyer secured the early game, with the Dark Seer just absolutely dominating that bottom lane, and it just turned out to be a very, very good split pushing game. All right, this has been uh, this has been Southern Cross Dota in house Thursday nights. This happens every Thursday, and I will be casting every Thursday because, well, why not? I'm having fun. And I hope you've enjoyed watching. I'm Ice Cube. Please follow me on Twitter at, at Ice Cube Dota. I C E C U B E D Dota. And look out for my posts for when I'm doing more of these because it's been incredibly fun. And I thank you guys who have tuned in tonight to watch. The VODs will be up on the website, so make sure you check that out at Southern Cross Dota at YouTube or whatever that is. But make sure you look at the forums and 
It'll be every Thursday night from 7 o'clock. Thank you for joining me. Take care and have a good week. Have a good rest of the week and a weekend.